What we're going to do now to finish out chapter two is we are going to graph an inequality. So anytime you graph inequality, whether it's an in intermediate algebra here or whether you move on to college algebra and you graph inequalities of other types of figures, it is the same three-step process. Most of the work is in step one. Step one, what you're going to do is you are going to graph the boundary equation. And what the boundary equation is, is I'm going to take the 2x minus 3y, and instead of messing with the inequality, I'm going to change that to an equals. I like to graph with the slope and the y-intercept, so I'm going to solve this for y. If you choose to graph it uh, with the intercepts, that's fine too. So to solve this for y, I'm going to subtract 2x, and I get negative 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 9. Then I'll divide both sides by negative 3 and I get y is equal to, don't forget to distribute this negative 3 to both terms, so a negative 2 divided by negative 3 is 2 thirds x, 9 over negative 3 is negative 3. The slope is 2 thirds, the y-intercept is 0, negative 3. I'm going to graph this in the same way we were just graphing equations in previous videos. My y-intercept's negative 3, and then I'm going to go up to and then write 3. I'm going to do that again, up 2 and then write 3. Here's step 2. Don't connect the dots just yet. When you graph an inequality, step 2 is you have a choice. Are you going to connect the dots with a dotted or solid line? A dotted line is what you use when the boundary is not part of the solution. In other words, when you don't have an equals. It's the same thing as an open circle when you're graphing on the number line. A solid line is when the boundary is also part of the solution, when you have equals, which I do not have in this problem. It's the same thing as a filled in circle. So here I go. I'm going to connect these since I do not have equals. I'm going to use a dotted line. So dot, 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 dot. What I've done is I've divided the Cartesian plane into two halves. And now what I need to do from here is I need to decide, are the ordered pairs on this side of the, the boundary the solutions, or are the ordered pairs down here the solutions? Meaning, do these ordered pairs satisfy the, equal, uh, the inequality, or do these ones satisfy the inequality? Do not just assume that because this is less than, that means to shade below. 50% of the time it will. 50% of the time it won't. So what you do for the third step is you pick a test point not on the line. Okay. You pick a test point that is not on the boundary. Because I like to multiply by 0, I usually pick my test point of 0, 0 when I'm able to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, OK, 0, 0, right here where my pen is. That's the test point. It's going to represent this whole side of the inequality. So I'm going to test it, 0, 0. If I get a true statement here, that means this side, these are the solutions. If I get a false statement here, that means that the solutions were on the other side. So let's see. I go back to the inequality. I've got 2 times 0 minus 3 times 0. And I want to know, is that less than 9? 0 minus zero is less than nine, that is a true statement. So what that means is my test point was right here. It created a true statement, meaning it is a solution. So that means all the solutions to this inequality are on the same side. And so I'm going to shade over here. These are the solutions to this linear inequality.